Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll go through the five day precipitation and temperature and then we'll have a look at the longer range with the GFS, GM, ESMWF and the ensembles. Now we still do have a pretty uh, pretty decent weather out there for some, especially in the east, but we do now have more of a showery regime coming in over the next few days, with the winds veering more from an easterly direction, and that looks like it's going to continue over the next week or two. We are seeing hints now on some of the models, perhaps, of something colder. Now, this easterly flow isn't going to be cold, it's going to be around average, maybe slightly chillier than average or milder than average at times, but we are seeing from the GFS especially, and perhaps some of the other models at day 10, of this blocking going further northwards and seeing a lot of sort of a potentially like a polar plunge, but of course, being end of May, uh, end of April, early May, it's not going to be bitterly cold by any means, but it could really put a spare in the works um, in terms of temperatures, because uh, I think a lot of people now are, are wanting these sort of high teens, low 20s, whereas if we got this sort of northerly wind that some of the models are hinting at, we would be dropping those temperatures down by a good 10 degrees or so. So we'll have a look at that in the second half of the video. So remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So we start with the live radar, you can see it is dry for quite a few, but there are a smackering of showers, especially further westwards. Across Ireland and Northern Ireland, there are quite a few moderate to heavy showers, some real heavy showers in there, but again, only really uh, heavy in the core of the showers, where uh, it only hits in isolated spots. A few showers across the West Midlands into Northwest England, across Wales and Southwest England, but east of that, it's still a pretty stunning day out there. Temperatures, once again, getting into the high teens, touching on 20 degrees in a few spots, and of course across Scotland, a few showers around as well. There is more cloud around today, but of course there will be there have been cloud breaks, and there will continue to be cloud breaks over the coming days. Uh, just wherever that happens, we'll see the highest temperatures. And speaking about temperatures, if we do put the temperature overlay on, um, you can see warmest once again in the east, where we do have thinner cloud, more uh, sunshine, um, and less showers. You can see towards the London area, into East Anglia, the East Midlands, down to the far southeast. Pretty warm today. Once again, high teens, low 20s. These sort of temperatures, though, were much more widespread over the last few days. Um, but of course, they are retreating and they will be diminishing quite significantly over the next day or two as we do start to bring more of an easterly flow in, which is going to be. Not cold, but it's going to be chilly, uh, and it's not going to be t-shirts and shorts weather, which I think for some, uh, well, it, well, what it has been for some over the last few days. <clears throat> so we do now have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation and temperature over the next five days. Now you can see over the course of the afternoon, you see those showers in the west. They will die out in some regions overnight tonight, but they will sort of pick up again through the morning across many central areas of England and Wales, down into central southern England, into East Anglia, East Midlands, perhaps some more persistent lighter rain and showers elsewhere. So as I said, there will be dry weather around, but there is going to be quite a high chance of seeing some showers over the coming days. So again, very interesting to see the distribution of these showers through Tuesday morning. You see that, that shower activity does pep up very quickly throughout the morning into lunchtime, and that is something we do need to keep an eye on. Um, how we do move through Tuesday evening, those showers move northwards and westwards in off that easterly breeze before things do die down a little bit and by Wednesday it is pretty dry, uh, not too bad through Wednesday afternoon into the evening, could be quite another stunning day for some but chillier inside of temperatures because of that easterly flow. Weather front's trying to push in from the west but they're not going to make much progress up against the high pressure and we're just going to continue with an easterly wind and by Thursday, Friday quite a few showers coming in at times on the easterly wind but it is light showers uh, and they are quite scattered. Um, it's really going to be those temperatures that are going to be down because as I said if you have a look at those 850 HPA temperatures you can see it's not crazy cold, not getting out sort of minus 10 degrees at 850 HPA which is expected uh, in spring and winter but or at least early spring and winter. But perhaps getting down to more, sort of minus four, minus five degrees, which is chilly and cold enough to give some frosts. And if we do have a look at those max temperatures, you can see this afternoon, where we see where we saw the sunshine in the east and the southeast, 15, 16, even higher in a few spots was seen. Tomorrow, though, you see a bit of a frost across parts of Ireland and Northern Ireland. And by Tuesday afternoon, we see temperatures once again potentially rise to 15, 16 degrees in a few spots, but where you have more cloud and rain, only 8 or 9 degrees, much, much chillier. And that does continue through Wednesday, an ice age of frost potentially across parts of Scotland and Ireland. 
and by Wednesday afternoon, we could be seeing temperatures once again rise to 17 or 18 degrees further westwards, but on the east coast, much chillier, and that's the same signal for Thursday, where we do see temperatures once again rise in a few spots to 16, 17 degrees, but more widely mid to low teens, so a good few degrees down, more towards average, and that continues through Friday, chillier night, and by the afternoon, with more showers around, highs of 14, 15 degrees in a few spots, but more widely, 11 to 13 and colder than that on the east coast. So you can see temperatures are definitely trending downwards over the coming days. Not massively cold by any means, but chillier than they have been recently. So it will definitely, there will definitely be a little bit of a chill in the air. And of course, with an easterly flow, there will be a little element of wind chill out there. It won't be massively cold, but when that wind does blow, it's going to feel a little chilly. It won't be feel, feel quite like summer-like like it has recently. So do have a look at the long range, have a look at the GFS, GM and ESMWF. As I said at the start of the video, the GFS is showing potentially something much colder in the longer term, and we do need to keep an eye on that for the start of May. Now, the only thing that really we can really worry about cold weather this time of year, because there's very unlikely to be any snow or anything, is frosts that could damage plants, garden, uh, got, like many gardeners will, have, will be putting frosts, uh, will be putting plants out, um, will be growing crops in their garden, um, and uh, sort of fruit and veg, uh, and this time of year, and if we do see frost, it can damage them significantly. So that is the one thing we do need to keep an eye on. And seasonably late frosts are very, very, very damaging. So yeah, it would be unfortunate if we did see this, but we are seeing it on this GFS run today. So if we do run through it, you can see the high pressure to our north starting to build in an easterly wind as we see those cut-off lows. Pretty chilly easterly wind and showers coming in on that. But higher pressure is still near, um, so it's not going to be a, a washout. Beyond that, high pressure stays over the top and to our north. And we see generally a northeasterly flow. It keeps building up towards Greenland. And right towards the end of the run, we do start to pull in a proper cold northerly wind and it's not under vigorous low pressure so it's going to be light winds and they could be potentially overnight frosts now if we do have a look at those upper air temperatures at the end of the run really chilly indeed getting down to minus five at 850 hpa widespread region of minus five degrees and it could be even colder than that in a few spots and again look at that temperature deviation a good Four to six degrees below average. Chilly, chilly, chilly indeed. And if we do have a look at the United Kingdom look, if we just zoom in, have a look at those two meter temperatures. You can see dropping down towards freezing, maybe one, two degrees, even to central southern England for the 4th of May. So getting into early May, still showing potential for a frost. Now, of course, rural areas will be colder than this. Um, yeah, and towns and cities may be slightly milder than that. So it is very difficult to say at this stage, but if we did see this scenario come off, I would not be surprised to be seeing potentially damaging frosts um, if, for, if any gardeners out there and farmers as well. So it is something we do need to keep an eye on because, of course, these upper air temperatures are not exceptional by any means, but coming this late in the year, they could be pretty chilly and damaging, as I said. If we do have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. Now, it only goes out to day 10, so I wouldn't expect it to be showing that colder wind towards uh, 384 hours, as we can't get there. But it'd be interesting to see if it does provide blocking towards Greenland. So we do uh, have a look at this. You can see high pressure over the top and to the north, easterly flow over the coming days in the next week or so. Quite chilly easterly flow. And right towards day 10, we do have high pressure to our north, not pulling anything exceptionally cold in, perhaps even a little bit of warmth in the far southeast, but there is high pressure building up towards Greenland, so perhaps there is an evolution there to be going more of a northerly wind. But at this stage, GM run, not showing it too much, just generally keeping that easterly flow, eventually potentially dragging up a bit of a warmer air mass up from the southeast as that easterly flow continues. If we do have a look at the east of New Efron, see how that does compare. If we do go have a look at the pressure charts, you can see again, low pressure dropping to our south, high pressure to our north, bringing in an easterly flow. Pretty chilly indeed for some. Um, and then we do see at day 10, build towards Greenland. Now, it's nothing exceptional at this stage, but it is starting to bring the wind into the north, and you can see colder air is sinking southwards. Look at that temperature deviation. We're in a colder than average air mass. So it's not quite as cold as the GFS, but still showing that potentially at day 10. And that, again, 
could cause damaging frost if we did see this scenario. So it is something we need to keep an eye on. A lot of blocking around, yes, is giving drier than average conditions uh, for the time being, and will continue to do so even though there is more shower activity this coming week. But, of course, it always brings the risk of seeing a late season northerly sort of spell where we could see cold arctic air to get dragged in for a time and we could see a few days of damaging frost so it is something we do need to take into account now if we do finish up the video by having a look at the ensembles if we do start with the gfs ensembles you'll be able to see the sort of um there, there isn't there's quite a lot of scatter around over the next sort of week or so there's quite a lot of constants it's going to be around slightly above slightly below average at times in terms of upper air temperatures so it's going to be some decent days here or there but um not like consistently amazing quite a few showers around as well a lot of convective showers with not massive precipitation spikes but quite frequent low levels of precipitation spikes so it could be a lot of rain in some regions and there could be very little rain in other regions wherever those showers do band up in the longer term though you can see the the sort of ensemble mean is around the average but you can see some very cold runs appearing and some very mild runs appearing as well so again we need to take those both into account uh, again it's all where that blocking goes so there is cold potential there but it's not got loads uh, uh, there's not a guarantee behind it at this stage not loads of support but there is some support and that's why we do need to address it if you have a look at those dew points, you can see some in the longer term going much colder, and that would be symbolic of an Arctic air mass. And we have a look at those two meter temperatures. You can see generally over the next week or so temperatures in the mid teens, 13 to 15 degrees. And in the longer term, of course, you can see those temperatures having a lot of spread, perhaps some getting up to the mid-20s, others getting down towards 10 degrees. So we'll have to keep, of course, an eye on that. If we do have a look at the 850 HPA temperature and precipitation from the Eastern Louis Efron, you can see, once again, very similar in terms of quite up and down over the next week or so, but generally around average, slightly above, slightly below, and in the longer term, trending perhaps below average, in fact, um, right towards the start of May. So perhaps... Eastern Blue F ensemble is also trending a tad colder to start May, maybe bringing in a northerly wind. Quite a few are getting down to that sort of minus 4 to minus 6 degrees at 850 HPA. At the same time, there are quite a few getting above 10 degrees at 850 HPA. Good 5 maybe, but we're seeing more in that colder end of the spectrum. Of course, the operational GFS is with that. The Eastern Blue F operational run trended with some more northern uh, or Greenland based blocking. So I do think there is something in this and it is something we do need to keep an eye on but for the time being we have an easterly flow coming in this week it's going to be slightly chillier than it has been recently but it won't feel amazingly cold by any means it'll just be generally more towards uh, sort of april averages um, there will be some more precipitation around but it's not going to be complete washout there's going to be a few showers could be miserable uh, a day or here a day, a day or two here or there for some but for the vast majority, there will still be some uh, plenty of dry, uh, pretty sunny weather over the next five days. Um, but yeah, as I said, in the longer term, we just got to keep an eye on this, nor uh, this northern blocking trend. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.